awake the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And welcome, and we welcome in a very special way those viewing on our live stream broadcast. We're happy to have you with us. And as we come together on this day, a day within the octave or in the season of Christmas, we celebrate the epiphany, the manifestation of the Lord Jesus to the Gentiles, to the non-Jews, the Magi. And as we come together to encounter the Lord in word and sacrament this day, let us first acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring lightness to those in the darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, 
may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Median and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment and do the king, and with your justice the king son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All the kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the holy and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by your by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it now has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles are co heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. When was the last time that you had an epiphany, a new realization, something you maybe hadn't noticed before, and all of a sudden you noticed and there was a new kind of understanding. Now you, you know. Well, during this time of pandemic, there may well have been some manifestations of some new realizations, some epiphanies, perhaps a new appreciation of the importance of service workers, be it those working in grocery stores or other support services that we've kind of taken for granted and we've kind of become ever more aware of their importance. Maybe it was in this past year we were awakened to the pervasive influence of racism in society and a special appreciation at the same time of the challenges that people in law enforcement face. Those and so many other epiphanies, those new awarenesses, are something perhaps to reflect upon in this feast of the epiphany. Now certainly this feast in a particular way celebrates the revelation of God the manifestation of God, born as a babe, the child, Christ child, to foreigners, to outsiders, non-Jews. It was an epiphany for them in their understanding as they were doing some research, learned men as they were, to discover a new star. And they made the connection with the Old Testament Israelite prophecy of the Messiah where there would be a light, a star, that would indicate the coming of that Messiah, as we hear, in fact, spoken of in the book of Isaiah. But it was more than the manifestation and revelation of God to these foreigners, but they also had other kinds of revelations, manifestations, things that were made known to them in a new way, they noticed and they were enlightened. And in fact, having been enlightened, they responded, they made some action. We think about the Magi first noticing that star in the sky and noticing and understanding its significance, they responded by going and searching out this newborn king of the Jews. They were making inquiries in Jerusalem, as it said in the Gospel, and Herod got all upset 
as well as the chief priests and scribes wondering, oh boy, what's going on here? And they brought with them those gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, something to take to this king of the Jews to give him homage, to give him due respect as they saw someone very special coming on the scene. They also noticed, they were made ever more aware of Herod's strange reaction and his desire for them to come back once they've located the child Jesus. He said, come back and tell me where he is so that I too can do him homage. But they noticed something about Herod's, whether it was his demeanor, his expression, but they read him to the point where they decided not to come back and tell Herod where Jesus was. They disregarded his request. They noticed, they acted accordingly. The new epiphanies that you and I have been awakened to in 2020 might give us some pause, first to kind of process the new awareness, and then maybe to draw us to some action, some response to this new awareness, this epiphany. It may be the renewed appreciation that you and I have of the people who are so very special in our lives, who mean the most to us, and who perhaps we haven't been able to visit, but for maybe, you know, phone calls or FaceTime or a wave through a window, but to come to a better understanding of how precious and special they are and how much we miss those individuals. And what might we do in our effort to let them know how special and important they are in our lives? Another epiphany we may have come to know in this past year is the realization of the importance of our Catholic faith, the Holy Eucharist. Many of you perhaps at home haven't been able to come to Mass because you've chosen to, you know, if you have a vulnerable health condition or of a, an advanced age, you don't want to compromise that, to, you know, to put yourself in any risk. But it's been perhaps a long time since you've had the opportunity to receive Holy Communion. There was a woman who came to our outdoor parking lot drive-in Mass we had around the holiday, and she revealed how she, this was the first time she came to attend Mass, and it was the first time since March that she was able to receive Holy Communion. And this really brought a, a deeper awareness and appreciation and the hunger she had for Jesus in Eucharist and the wonderful gift it was for her to be able to receive the Lord in this outdoor opportunity to encounter Jesus still being inside her car and protected. Maybe it's a time for you to reflect in this new year, to look back at the last year. I know we may want to forget the last year, but maybe there are some new epiphanies that have come about, some things that you may have noticed, which you previously maybe hadn't noticed or you overlooked. And today, maybe at the Eucharist, we can ask God for the grace to notice and then to respond to that new awareness. Like the Magi who saw the star and responded by going visiting and locating the newborn king of the Jews, how they disregarded Herod's desire for the, him, them to tell him where he, this king was, understanding that, no, he didn't have good designs in mind for this newborn king. Ponder what difference this awareness makes. What actions, what responses might you want to make in the new year with the epiphanies that have arisen in your life? And ask the Lord to help you in whatever way 
to be faithful in making whatever changes and whatever the new awareness offers you to respond to that which God has surfaced in your awareness, in your mind, in your appreciation. And maybe we can even place those appreciations that gratitude and those particular people and circumstances on the altar. Thanking God for that awareness, thanking God for the many blessings he's given despite the difficulties in this past year and the grace as we go forward to respond ever more aware and kind of alert to wherever those epiphanies might arise going forward. I invite you now to please stand as we continue by professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, and proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming before our Heavenly Father, we open the coffers of our hearts and place the needs of the Church and the world before Him. For the Church, that all Catholics may faithfully follow where God leads us and be attentive to the deepest desire He has placed in every heart, the desire for God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they may be attentive to those who are most at risk in our society and respect and protect human life in all stages of development, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are impacted by the coronavirus and for divine intervention to stem the spread of the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are searching for the meaning in life, that they may recognize the divinity of Jesus Christ and be led by the light of the Holy Spirit to the fullness of truth about God and his love for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners, that all of our resolutions for the new year will be in accord with God's will for us, and in this year of the Eucharist, we may each resolve to grow in our devotion to the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that the faithful departed may come to adore the Lord in his presence for, for eternity, especially at this Mass, from Monsignor Edward Moretti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions received in our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who pierced the world's darkness with the light of your son's birth, be pleased to hear and answer these in all our prayers, which we make through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are now offered not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace with a nod or a wave, keeping socially distant. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to follow the invitation of your seating ambassador as you come up to receive Holy Communion wearing your mask. On the final blue circle as you're waiting to come up, please wait for the person in front of you to arrive at the blue square, at which time a person would lower one's mask, consume the host, and then please return to your same seat by way of the side aisle. And as you come up, we invite you to place your hand open and flat just so that it will avoid the contact as I distribute communion. And we thank you for your cooperation.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements before we conclude Mass. First of all, on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, we have a virtual community prayer. And it was very successful in December, and so we've decided to extend it into the month of January, where you will explore a different method of prayer each Tuesday for 20 minutes on Zoom. This Tuesday at 7 p.m., we'll offer a guided meditation. You can visit our website, holyfamilyduxbury.org, and find information to participate. And it's found on the scrolling banner at the opening page, right at the top. If you didn't receive my recent letter inviting you to donate to our parish grand annual appeal, I invite you to please visit our website and donate online. This year we'll need to replace our church HVAC system. Your generosity is needed and will be much appreciated. Stay connected with Holy Family, if you're not already, via email or text and receive weekly video messages and information about online and in-person events and opportunities here at Holy Family. Sign up at flocknote.com, F-L-O-C-K-N-O-T-E dot com. And just a reminder, confessions are available on Thursdays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. here in the church, and also adoration of the Blessed Sacrament takes place every Friday from noon to 2 p.m. And please pray for the repose of the soul of Maretta Tucker Gay, who died recently. And one final bit of instruction before we conclude. As you exit the church, please follow the invitation of your seating ambassador. We exit uh, by the last rows first. And if you do have an offering to provide, there's offertory uh, collection boxes right by the, north, the doorway leading into the narthex. And we thank you for your generosity in supporting our parish. We depend upon you. And the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. And I invite you to respond amen to each prayer. May God who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to meet him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, and have a wonderful week. Joy to the world.